So the next talk is going to be on the truth about adopting a service mesh by Lin Sun. My session, the truth about adapting a service mesh. Let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Lin Sun. I am the director of open source with solo.io. I've been working in the Israel project for four plus years. I have a lot of patents. 200 plus, and I wrote a book about a year ago, Istio Explained, to really help our users to quickly get started with Istio. Thought process for adopting a service mesh. Many questions to ask yourself. What is service mesh? Do you need a service mesh? What are the service mesh projects available out there? Where do I start? What are the surprises and benefits? And what's the next step for you if you decide service mesh is the right for you? Challenging to use microservices, as you all know, as services are moving to be cloud native, Kubernetes based, a set of new challenges arise. How do you observe interactions among your services? How do you secure the communication among the services? And how do you increase the resilience of your services? And how do you control traffic as new versions come in? You want to be able to precisely control how the traffic will go out to the new version. What is a service mesh? Fundamentally, service mesh is a programmable framework that allows you to observe connect and secure your microservices. Service Mesh solves application networking problems for you, so you don't have to solve these problems in your application, so you can focus on the business logic of your application. Service Mesh provides discovery of your services, secure the communication of your services, um, to, to, be, to allow you to traffic control and shifting and shape, uh, shaping and mirroring a lot of functions around traffic control. Service Mesh allows you to apply service-based uh, access control or method-based. The fact Service Mesh have the application information, it allows it to do intelligent things. Service Mesh also provides telemetry collection, increase your service resilience, and this is all on the basis of without you needing to write any code in your application. Last not the least, Service Mesh provides an API programmable interface so that you can program in the Service Mesh, which pro program the Cypher proxy for you. So a quick architecture overview of what Service Mesh is. Um, how does it work? Um, there are two key components, control plane on the top and data plane at the bottom. So control plane is what you interact with the Service Mesh, the program Service Mesh, and Service Mesh in turn to program the sidecar proxies in pink. The proxy will start with default configuration, which are a little bit dummy, and then through your intelligence programming, the proxy can be customized to your specific applications. The proxy, for instance, can upgrade the connection to be secure connection, collect that telemetry data for you. The proxy can control which endpoint the traffic sends to. So a lot of intelligence are build into the proxy to help you mediate that traffic. So do you really need a service mesh? Only you can decide. The reason is you know your organization really well. Um, you, you know how many microservices you have. You know what programming languages your team are using. You know, um, are you running on Kubernetes, VMs? Are you, how much is your journey on cloud native? What protocols your applications are using? Are you, are you using any SQL set? What are the scales are you looking at for your services? And do you need to 
consistent collect telemetry data. So only you can decide. Do you have supporting infrastructures? Um, keep an eye out. If you're not using Service Mesh today, you don't think you have a need, I do want you to keep an eye out because you know your organization might change for explosion in a number of services and increasing of languages. And the complaints about maintaining multiple framework language networking binaries, libraries, and certification rotation every 30 or 90 days. How are you maintaining that if you are doing in-house um, certification management for your proxy yourself or your application service yourself? Or do, if you ever need to have better observability system to be able to ping out which service has the problem. Also, it's important to check do you have the supporting infrastructure? Do you have metrics logging and tracing systems? Are you using GitOps? Are you having CICD and Git repository? Are you using Kubernetes and VMs? A lot of things to consider. At the end of the day, service mesh is a critical piece of your infrastructure. So we want you to make sure you think wisely and pick it wisely because the fact the proxy is down, it will take down your data plan. It will take down your services. So now let's get to the next topic is how do you select a service mesh? If you do decide your organization will need a service mesh, the first thing I want you to think through, remember that Psycar proxy is on the data plane. Is do you go in with Envoy or something else? The industry kind of sets Envoy as the default proxy for service mesh, mainly because Envoy is really bad for test in production environments like Lyft. Um, and also Envoy is very mature, very diverse community. So as you can see, Istio, Con Console Connect, AppMesh, Kuma, Open Service Mesh, all these great projects landed with Envoy. Um, there are certain exceptions though. So you want to check that first. You want to also think about maturity, production deployment, how many users are deployed, the service mesh in production, because that's battle test. You want somebody else to do the testing for you. Istio, LinkedIn, Console Connect, I think they are the three top adopted service mesh in production today. Production support and multi-vendor, right? If that vendor fail, do you have somebody else to go to? Are also extremely important. In this case, Istio is multi-vendor. It was founded by three big company, and now it has a growing ecosystem. Uh, more vendors coming into Istio and providing production support or managing Istio solutions. Certainly some of your workloads are probably on Kubernetes, so you want to watch out for Kubernetes supports. Um, Istio and LinkedIn are certainly ahead of the game in this scenario. VM support, uh, you want to make sure if you have workloads on VM, you want to make sure it can continue to support your workloads. Maybe you don't have any plan to move them to Kubernetes, or maybe you want to enjoy the benefit of the service mesh while they are running on VM. So uh, check out the service mesh that has decent VM support. CNCF did a survey last year. If you haven't seen it, uh, Istio is about 45-ish uh, most dominant uh, service mesh um, in production towards end of 2020. Sorry, my slides are uh, turning are not quite working. Okay, there we go. Where do I start? If you do decide Istio is the service mesh you want to go with, um, I would say definitely start with the edge because that's the easiest way to adapt a service mesh. As you can see, you can have Envoy proxy at the edge. 
and then gradually adding your services to the mesh. You don't have to add them to day one. In fact, most common cases is just don't add them yet. After you move to Envoy-based uh, API gateway, which is issue ingress gateway or Blue Edge, um, and then start looking at adapting at other services to service mesh. I want you to pick a specific user case and iterate. There's no magic. Check out your business needs, not the buzzword, right? So a lot of the users I work with, they adopt Istio for mutual TLS. They want to use Istio to upgrade the connection to mutual TLS among their services. They want to do authorization, authentication among their services or at the edge. Um, so that's the most common case in my opinion. And then we also have users about Istio wanting better telemetry collection, um, wanting better resilience, so they can do global failover, you know, and do that securely, right? Do that in a better performance way, so we can always default local, and when local fails, uh, the traffic would automatically route to the remote cluster or the cluster in a different set, a data center but running the same service. Uh, canary release for a specific service, it's also a very common cases, but I think it's less likely because you could potentially work around with a different service. Uh, it's a little bit more work uh, with Istio, it's a lot easy, so you don't have to do actual um, canary um, versions and everything. You could potentially just using Istio resources to ship that traffic automatically for you. And the next thing I want you to also think about is how your team going to integrate with Istio. What are your teams, right? Who owns what resources and functions? And how much your team needs to learn? Ideally, you want to minimize that learning uh, to the service team and your platform team should be able to understand Istio, Istio's resources, and be able to hide that complexity from the service team so that your service team can potentially leverage the mesh without much learning at all. Just inject the sidecar and maybe use the default policy from the platform team. And what consumption pattern are you gonna to provide to your service team? Ideally, I want them to be self-service so that you can enable them easily. And how do you enforce um, the policy at the global level and maybe at the team level and namespace level, but still allow them to override as needed. What are the surprises? Of course, as every journey, there are surprises. Uh, for, for service mesh, I think some of these are actually uh, general to all the service mesh. Um, the proxy and the, the application container at start time, it could be a surprise for you. The proxy actually may start um, after your application container starts. This is a problem because that traffic is not secure and the traffic may not be able to reach any services outside of Kubernetes. So your application container is not gonna really function until the proxy gets uh, fully started. Similar problem at stop time, your application container could stop first. Uh, I'm sorry, your proxy could stop first, uh, which abruptly disconnect your application container and it would end traffic, send 502 to your user. So these are not desired. Uh, fortunately, in Istio, there are workarounds for this. For the first one, there's an annotation you can apply at the pod level called the hold application until your proxy ready. The second one, there's a pre-stop hook, which we highly recommend our users to use, especially on the in Istio ingress gateway. So make sure you use those. Um, I had to pull into production uh, debugging call and it turned out there was no pre-stop hooks. Um, if you're using stateful set, 
I want to encourage you to use SEO 1.10. The reason is the container networking behavior has changed. And it was different than Kubernetes container networking behavior prior to 1.10. So it was super confusing if you're running with stateful sets. Um, so check out 1.10. And then the last, not the least, many of our users find out the default for timeout and retries was a huge shock. For example, we had retries equals two, and HTTP has no timeout. So sometimes that's not what user wanted. Um, thankfully, it still provides an easy way for you to override that either globally or at um, the route level. Um, it's just you just have to know um, the surprises ahead of the time will help you to troubleshooting and debugging. Okay. Um, sometimes the Istio API, albeit very rich, it may be a little bit hard to navigate uh, some of these key resources. Uh, at the edge, when you adapt it to for the edge, I want you to think through uh, gateway and virtual services. When you're adapting Istio for security purposes, neutral TS, uh, check out peer authentication policy. If you're using Istio for authorization or request-based authentication, check out authorization policy and request authorization authentication policy. Uh, if you're using SEO for like routing traffic, traffic shifting or resiliency, check out virtual services, destination rule. If you are importing external service into the mesh or having workloads running on VM, check out workload entry, service entry. What are the benefits? The most important thing. I actually reuse the slides from our friend at T-Mobile. Um, the reason is it's much easier for a user to say the benefits than me who work on the projects. And interestingly, as you can see, he said, you know, 50% reduction in MTTR. And most importantly, savings of engineering over 100K, that is huge. So thanks for the T-Mobile team uh, willing to try Istio, and I believe they have 100 clusters with Istio in production. What are the next step? If you are convinced, right, Istio, you need service mesh, Istio is the right way to go. Um, I highly recommend you to check out solo.io and sign up for a workshop. I actually wrote um, solely on the first workshop, and. Uh, co-authored with Christian Posta on the second workshop. So the foundation for Istio is the first shop allow you to get started with Istio easily. The second workshop teaches you how to deploy Istio to production environment. So very helpful, we also have badges. Um, and also check out Glue Mesh. If you ever need Istio production support, or oh, opinionated layer on top of Istio and other services mesh, like app mesh, check out Google mesh. We support Istio long-term support N minus four. Um, now it was N minus three when I first made the charts. And uh, you know, we have FIPS build and different upstream builds available too. So definitely check it out. Okay. Um, next thing. Oops, sorry. That's all I have. Thank you so much to come to my session. And let me know if you have any questions. Follow me on Twitter and follow Istio and Solo.io on Twitter. Thank you. OK, that was the end of the presentation. Uh, feel free to drop any questions in the Q&A. Hi, Lynn. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll be here. Is there anything in addition you want to say um, other than the presentation? Um, so if you're really interested in Istio, uh, in 60 minutes, I'm actually going to give a workshop. Uh, how do you get started with Istio? So you can find my workshop in the tracks. Just go to tracks workshop 
and then you should be able to get to my workshop. I think pre-registration maybe requires so if there's a space, you should be able to get to. <laughs> All right, great. We'll just wait for a couple of minutes to see if there's any questions. Okay, I don't I don't think anyone has any questions. That was a very comprehensive presentation. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. I appreciate all the feedback so far. I really appreciate it. Thanks right. for having me. Take care. Bye now. Bye-bye.